to understand uh, uh-huh. like what is the monolithic and uh, microservice architecture what is the difference between them like when we use monolithic or microservices because this is something like which on top of my head like which i want to understand better hmm. so earlier there was let's say a ticketing system ircdc site okay mm-hmm. let's take an example site if the ircdc site is only just one server okay you ha- you can run inside it the front end app okay inside itself you can run the back end app inside itself you can run the db as well right mm-hmm. okay but now my in the, like but now the application the flip, let's say flipkart.com right flipkart.com is not a simple website right it might have different different applications running within inside it okay one for the orders let's say one is for the orders handling orders one is for the user info okay one is for the cash on delivery okay one is the payment gateway okay you can break down your application single application into multiple you know uh applications and each applications now because they are independent from each other let's say your cash on delivery app runs on python okay your payment gateway runs on the java your user related uh, application runs you know on golang okay so each are now able to basically use its own programming language use its own resources everything right so basically what is microservices microservices is breaking down of one single service into multiple parts right but still these order service user service will need to interact with each other right the payment service might need to interact with the cash on delivery service right so probably there is to be some way to have that inter app communication right this can be over http this could be over socket this could be anything right microservices does not say that hey two services need to talk over http only it's just a way that you do it right so it could be a socket connection it could be a uh, there was a remote procedural call okay it's just that two different services interacting with each other and all these services interacting to make a big application right together create a big application now uh, there's a like you can see see there's a severe advantage here right if you if you want you can definitely have it in as a monolithic service right but then let's say your payment service can be let's say you you have created your application in java right and your payment service is something that you know that it is better to be written in python right but because your whole application is already in java you have to by hook or crook you have to make sure that your payment service is also you know uh running in java only you can't use python you don't have that liberty now but if you are into microservices architecture you can say okay fine most of the my services are in java but if i think that a payment service should be written in python it is easier to maintain it is easier to handle everyone is basically writing their payment service in python let me go with the python right um, i'm sorry like i still can't get it so basically i'm just trying to understand the use of microservices so okay so my question is uh, uh like what if like you know if we add the load balancer in between the monolithic architecture and it will does the same thing like you know what i understood from this no, let me uh, yeah. Uh, yeah i can tell you load balancer part no no, no you can... part, yeah uh from the uh, from the concept uh-huh. explain what i understood is like you're trying to reduce the traffic between uh, by segregating different segments in the same app sections like for payment related uh, services the uh, microservices will route all the traffic to the payment uh, you know Say, and leaving the other uh, uh, sections as is without having much burden on those is that what it means because it seems like you know this is what my understanding please correct me so you are attacking the problem to a system admin you know mindset mm-hmm. what it is required to achieve microservices you are att- like you know attacking to it i am saying why is microservices needed at first place microservices is not needed at first place to reduce their network traffic or any of the infrastructure related stuff okay mm-hmm. did you get that it's mostly on the development side of thing so the developer choice developer freedom okay did you get that it's like the system design not a system design it's more around application design right so does the order uh, order related stuff needs to be written in the python same programming languages as the payment related stuff if you are using a monolithic service you have to go that route like you have to use the same programming language right mm-hmm. but if you are using microservices architecture your developer teams can say that hey we have been using writing uh, we have been using java for all the applications right but for the payment we need python application so why not we create another service and how does that service interact with other like our main service it can interact using the http and this is how you you actually from a monolithic service you break down multiple microservices okay now 
in the current scenario many of the teams are so mature they are directly going and attacking the like they are not saying that okay we'll first create the monolithic service and then segregate different parts out of it they are directly saying hey let's begin with the microservices architecture right and it's nothing to do with network traffic and anything or you know say, like it's not related to the systems or infrastructure it's not solving any infrastructure related problem maybe it is adding to it okay <laughs> going with the microservices architecture may, might even add i would say might even add complexity okay for the infrastructure person but it is simplifying the freedom of choice for the developers and separation of concern as well right so a payment team okay development team just needs to focus on the payment related code they don't have to think about the cash on delivery code or order related code if all the code would have been together within the same application any mess up that the order team would do would also impact the payment team because it is the same service right mm -hmm. so yeah it's the separation of concern it's like freedom of choice okay for the developers for the infrastructure person, it means more work. Okay, it's not solving our problem. Uh, it's making it far more complex, but it is actually solving the business problem, right? If your user service goes down, at least your payment and order service are still intact, right? Because they are a different microservice. Okay. Yeah. And Docker does really help you to solve that problem. Okay, uh, of the like the microservices invoke some problem for infrastructure people running multiple apps. Like rather than running a single big app, we have now to run multiple small apps, right? How do we manage it? How do we isolate it using containers? How do we manage containers using Docker? So yeah. Mm -hmm.